Hello, Physics Nation. My name is Nate Lormand, and I'd like to talk about rotational kinematics. Uh, it all starts with radians, a different way to measure rotation. So students are usually familiar with, like I said, rotations. When this thing comes back to its original position, they say, oh, it's rotated once, or it's moved through 360 degrees of angular displacement. Well, all we're going to do is take a little tape measure wrap around the outside of this thing uh, just like you measure your waist it's actually really hard and annoying <laughs> i've measured it already it's approximately 110 centimeters and then if you divide by the radius which is about 17 and a half centimeters you get two pi so imagine this thing sweeping out the circumference and then all we're going to do is divide that distance by the radius. And it's just a different way to say how much something rotates. So, you know, mathematical definitions are pretty boring. Um, that leads to angular velocity. So they're used to saying revolutions per minute. In fact, that's what my stroboscope reports. Um, flashes per minute, and we just have to get used to a different way to say, oh, OK, one rotation is 2 pi radians. It's dimensionless, of course. Uh, and like I said, the mathematical details are, are important, but pretty dry. So what we do is we try to measure alpha, the rate of change of spinning when we turn this thing off. And honestly, it's a great review of normal acceleration, translational acceleration. What does a meter per second per second really mean? Oh, this involves strobe photography. <laughs> so I don't even know if it's going to show up on the video. But all you do is uh, tune the frequency of flashing of the strobe light to match the frequency of spinning. And it appears as though it stops. I, I tell students to close their eyes, and when I say open, just open them for a split second. So open, open, open. And they say, you know, they see my hand at the same position every single time. So I do a really slow motion version of the stroboscopic effect, and then we try it for real uh, with some spin art machines and with the fan blades. You turn off the power and time how long it takes to go from the operating speed to zero, and you can find alpha, the rate of change of angular velocity, and you can sort of talk about what it means. Um, you know, the kids just want to play with the equipment, and so that's what I'm going to do. So can, can I tune the flashing frequency to match the spinning frequency so that it appears to stop? And is the strobic stroboscopic effect even going to work in this video? Who knows? Here we go. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think it's going to work. My frame rate is very poor, but it's flashing at 14. Ah, it's flashing at 1400 frames per second or uh, flashes per minute. Excuse me. It's hard to see, but they're actually two images of a piece of tape on the blade. There's only one piece of tape. So I'm going to cut that frequency in half and see if I can just get what? Ooh, that's close. Hang on. This is 800. Oh. And there it is. Boom. Well, like I said, it's not showing up very well. Oh, maybe it is. Hang on. It's not showing up very well on camera. But this is extremely close to the spinning frequency. Oops. I don't think the fan is very constant. Oh, yeah, I got it now. Hang on, right there. All right, so according to this stroboscope, this thing is spinning 817 times um, every minute. So let's see, what do we do here? We multiply by 2 pi, divide by 60. Is that correct? Yeah. 817. Oh, my calculator doesn't work in the dark. Anyway, um, you change the revolutions per minute into radians per second. And then you simply divide by the time it takes to go from its operating speed to zero. Uh, at the end of the fun lab, we, we took a test. So the week ended in sort of a boring way. But 
um, you know, we'll get back to fun next week. Do some at-home experiments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.